Good morning, Global Citizens. I'm Billy Weathers. And I'm Sandy Storm. And, and we, we welcome, welcome you to, to the Climate Change, Change Network. Network. The only news network increasing the frequency and severity of reporting on global climate change. This week, we are in Humboldt County, land of the Redwoods. <clears throat> and cannabis. Not that we would know anything about that. Like with every location we visit each week, we are here to focus on important changes this region will face with climate change and some of the measures locals are taking to prepare. We are broadcasting out of the Redwood Coast Energy Authority, a pretty chill joint powers authority that directly installs the best LED light bulbs this side of the Redwood Curtain. Home of some of the original back to the land hippies, this area has long been known for its progressive and sustainable ethos. However, when it comes to global climate change, no region is left as a sanctuary. That's right. The Humboldt Bay region faces threats from sea level rise to raging wildfires, and the community needs to prepare before the shift hits the fan. We're going to now pass it off to our news correspondent, Larry Goldberg, who's been embedded in the community with the fabulously good-looking Civic Spark Climate Action Team. Hello, this is Larry Goldberg reporting for the Climate Change Network, Humboldt's one and only Climate Action Network news. We are reporting here from Humboldt Bay, which is the economic heart of the Humboldt County economy. This bay has been productive for over a hundred years with fishing, shipping, and other marine related activities taking place here. Climate change over the next 50 years are going to have a dramatic impact on this area and we're going to be taking a look at some of the impacts that we can expect to see over the next 50 years. This is Larry Goldberg reporting for the Climate Change Network. Thank you Larry, fascinating stuff. Now we're heading up the bay to Arcata to see what's happening on the ground. Hint, it's subsiding. We're in Arcata today, the home of the world famous Oyster Festival and just a block away from the Humboldt Crabs Baseball Stadium. We're going to be talking about Arcata, which is a hotbed of environmental consciousness. And with us today is Steve Luther, who is one of our climate change uh, action team members for this area. So Stevie, tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in climate change issues. All right, great, Larry, thanks for having me and happy to be on the CCN network. I went, I am a Humboldt County native. I went to school at Williams College out on the East Coast and got involved with green politics and working with environmental clubs. Then I came back home to study natural resources planning at HSU. And with climate change, I really see an opportunity for people and for professionals to engage with the political process and to develop plans and policies that can help create more resilient communities. Thank you very much, Steve. And now we're going to talk about a little more of the issues that affect Arcata. And Steve, tell us a little bit more about what Arcata is doing to try to combat climate change. Well, Arcata has been doing a lot. In 2003, they developed a baseline greenhouse gas inventory and then developed a greenhouse gas reduction plan. So the city of Arcata has installed solar panels on the city hall. Um, we have a bicycle friendly community. Uh, they have one of the first uh, electric vehicle charging stations. And yeah, we're really excited. I think the community is really behind the effort and looking forward to deepening this process and to expanding it to other communities in Humboldt. Thank you very much, Steve. And now back to you at the news desk. Thank you for that report. Now we're heading over to the Bayside Park Farm. Deer out. Hi, this is Larry Goldberg reporting from Bayside. Today we're going to be talking on the Climate Change Network about farming and climate change. With me is regional newcomer Robert Douglas, who will be talking today about farming and how climate change might impact farming. So Robert, tell us about yourself and about the farming in this area. What have you learned? Uh, thank you for having me here, Larry. Um, and so since I moved out to Humboldt County from Flagstaff, Arizona, where I studied at Northern Arizona University, I have been truly impressed by the amount of agriculture that surrounds this area. Around a quarter of the land in Humboldt County is actually used for, for agriculture. Majority of that is for grazing and timber. However, uh, many crops are grown here locally. 
And um, as you can see here, we're at a community farm where community members gather to uh, grow food together to really use this land as a, as a way to educate our children about, uh, about agriculture and uh, to really get in touch with, with the food that we put on our, our plate. Um, this, this region is, is highly rural and so, uh, you know, agriculture is, is often a linchpin to this community as a, as an economic, um, as an economic driver, as well as a, a community, uh, connector. And tell me how climate change is going to impact this area. What's going to be the result of changing climate over time? Well, there are two major impacts that I see. Um, one is a loss of agricultural land due to sea level rise. So all the land located near the marsh will soon become a part of the ocean. Um, the other part is a decrease in productivity. The uh, grazing lands right now that all of the um, cattle ranchers as well as uh, dairy farmers rely on might see a lot less grass growing so that will decrease the amount of cattle that they're able to support on their land. Uh, another change in productivity might come in the form of the the fruits that are able to be grown here as there's going to be a change in the number of chill, the chill days that uh, fruit trees rely on to be productive and healthy. So here you see some changes that we're anticipating. Reporting here from Bayside, this is Larry Goldberg with the Climate Change Network. <laughs> this is Larry Goldberg reporting from the Arcata Community Forest, the Redwood Forest here in Arcata. I have with me Hannah Nielsen, who is going to talk about the ecology of the Redwood Forest and how climate change might affect that. Hi, Larry. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're standing here in the Redwood Park, and we found through research that Redwood Forests are actually able to intake three times more carbon dioxide than other forests. So it's really important to protect our old growth redwood forests here. And our redwood forests are reliant on precipitation and they're actually classified as a rainforest. So we really need the rains and the fog here. And so we've been seeing a lot of uh, increase in temperatures. So it's a fear, a concern we have in the local area of um, losing our redwoods. And any other impacts you can see from climate change in the way the biodiversity might uh, occur here? Yeah, so we have a really resilient ecosystem in the Redwood Forest. It's home to a lot of threatened and endangered species here. And so we know that resilient ecosystems, biodiverse ecosystems, have a better chance of withstanding rapid climate change. And so what we really need to do is continue to protect this biodiversity that we have. And so that's another reason that this ecosystem is so vital um, for climate change. I'm reporting now from the Arcata Marsh uh, complex. This is the wastewater treatment system for the city of Arcata, an innovative design that uses a permaculture technique of waste treatment through a marsh system, and it's become one of the most world famous sites for natural uh, waste treatment for any city. At this time, we're going to talk with Drew Clark, one of the Civic Spark members, who's going to tell us a little bit about himself and a little bit about the waste treatment plant here. Drew? Uh, hi, Larry. Uh, uh, it's great to be here today. Um, I I'm just I just finished. I'm finishing up my uh, master's uh, here at HSU uh, in Arcata, and I'm really excited to get started here with Civic Spark. Uh, one of the w worrisome things here in Arcata is the is that the uh, sea level rise could really affect this marsh in the way that salt the salt water intrusion could really uh, damage the current system that we have working here to treat the wastewater. We're reporting just outside the Arcata Marsh. We're with Drew Clark, who's going to tell us a little bit more about this neighborhood just outside the Arcata Marsh. Drew, tell me about this area. Uh, yeah, I actually uh, live right down here. Um, we're actually across from the scrapyard uh, in between the marsh and the scrapyard on G Street on South Arcata. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's o we're only here about maybe three or four feet above sea level. And uh, b back behind me, this whole area would become flooded, including my own house. So uh, we don't want that. 
So here's another report on climate change of the future. We need to uh, prepare for sea level rise. Neighborhoods like this might be underwater in the next 50 years. We're continuing our journey northward to see what ACE reporter Larry Goldberg has for us in the town of Trinidad. I have with me Humboldt County native Hannah Nielsen, who's going to talk about climate change and how it affects our quality of life. Hannah, you've lived here all your life. Tell me a little bit about Humboldt County. What makes this place special? Hi, Larry. Yeah, thanks for having me. I grew up here in Arcata, and I moved away to go to school in Oregon, and I decided to move back shortly after graduating because I really missed the quality of life and the rural lifestyle here. We have a really special environment with some pristine ecosystems and a chance to connect with nature and solitude, which there's not very many places you can walk out to the beach and not see another person. That's one of the reasons a lot of people in the community really love this area. Surveys have shown that quality of life is high up on their priorities when choosing to live here. So one thing we've been thinking about recently is this year we had record highs and more tourists than we've ever seen before. And while tourism is great for the local economy, it makes us wonder if this trend continues, what will happen to what makes this area so special in the first place, which is the quality of life, the ability to connect with nature and solitude, and um, we don't really have the infrastructure set up for a population growth, and many people would not like that living in this area. So do you envision people might migrate here due to climate change, come from Southern California, for example, and try to relocate? That is a concern that we've thought of here, and um, it is a fear of many people because it's kind of a little curtain, a place where people can have solitude. And so, um, especially with droughts and the weather changing and other areas of California and our resources up here, it's definitely of concern. And how about the local economy? Like, will the ocean changes affect the local economy with climate change? Yeah, that's a great question. We're actually known here for our oyster farming, and we have an oyster festival every year. And we know that um, the world's oceans are acidifying because of carbon dioxide absorption. We also, also know that the Pacific Northwest Coast has been hit the hardest because of tides. So that is of concern because the acidification is actually corrosive to oyster shells. And um, so we are worried that the local economy will be hit hard with the acidification of the world's oceans. This is Larry Goldberg with the Climate Change Network reporting from Trinidad, California. Thank you for the great reporting, Larry. And we're looking forward to coming back to Humboldt soon, hopefully with not too many climate refugees behind us. We'll see you for new reports in the future. In the meantime, stay high and dry. In the meantime, stay